Hello, and a very warm welcome to Alenti Royal YouTube channel. Meghan Markle pays tribute to her mother-in-law Princess Diana. She might never be the British Queen, but Meghan Markle is certainly a style queen. For her final public appearance as a working royal, Duchess Meghan wore a green ensemble while attending Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey alongside Prince Harry, that strong resembled an ensemble worn by Princess Diana at the 1982 Trooping the Color Ceremony. Meghan's opted for an Amelia Wickstead cape dress and matching William Chambers hat. She paired the look with nude stiletto pumps by Aquazura and a mini bag by Gabriella Hurst back in 1982. Meghan's mother-in-law wore a jewel-toned look for the traditional royal trooping the color ceremony. It's not the first time Meghan has paid tribute to Princess Diana. On Remembrance Sunday, the Suits star wore a very similar outfit to one worn by Diana at the event in 1984. Stepping out with the royal family at the Cenotaph, Meghan sopped it for a black coat, dress and wide-brimmed hat, along with a poppy pin to her lapel. Her outfit echoed the all-black ensemble worn by Diana at a Remembrance event in 1984. It could even be said that the Duchess of Sussex had turned to the princess for outfit inspiration. Meghan had wrapped up in an elegant $3,000 belted wool Stella McCartney coat for the event, as she joined the Countess of Wessex and Princess Anne's husband Vice Admiral Sir Timothy Lawrence on the Whitehall balcony. At the time, Diana shared the balcony with Princess Anne, Alice, Duchess of Gloucester, and the Queen Mother. While Meghan's outfit drew praise from fans, her coat designer Stella McCartney was slammed on Instagram for using the event photos to advertise her brand. Posting a photo of the Duchess to her Instagram account, Stella wrote, So honored to have HRH Duchess of Sussex in our Autumn 19 coat at Remembrance Day service. Another report. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry have shared unseen photos and video highlights from their meeting with young leaders from the Queen's Commonwealth Trust. The couple, who completed their final duties as senior members of the royal family this week, invited young leaders to a roundtable discussion at Buckingham Palace last week. Topics included mental health, equal opportunities for all, and the importance of supporting youth leadership to help address global challenges and drive positive change around the world. They shared a photograph from the meeting to their Sussex Royal Instagram stories, as well as a black and white outtake shot showing Harry looking relaxed in fits of laughter. The couple directed fans to the Queen's Commonwealth Trust Instagram page which shared video highlights of the conversation which took place. The Duchess of Sussex wore a $1,200 preen by Thornton Bragazzi asymmetrical toffee meaty dress, while Harry opted for a black suit with a white shirt, opting to make it more casual with the absence of a tie. The Duchess let the piece speak for itself with minimal accessories and wore her long brown locks loose around her shoulders. She teamed the dress with a pair of nude court heels and dainty gem earrings. Opting for a heavier makeup look, the Duchess matched her the peach tones on her cheeks with warm colors of her dress, adding lashings of highlighter to her upper cheekbones. She paired the look with a matching pale peach lip alongside a smoky eye look, with shadow on both her top and bottom eyelids paired with a light eyeliner. The couple were joined by Queen's Commonwealth Trust advisor Kenny Imathedin and Esther Marshall, founder of Stand Tall and an author of the Sophie Says book series. Also in attendance was Izzy Obeng, founder and director of Foundervine. Victor Hugo, founder of the Mentally Aware Nigeria Initiative. Kieran Kaur and Anna Acker of Hey Girl Dreamer. After quitting as members of the firm, Harry will lead his role as Commonwealth Youth Ambassador, but remains president of the Queen's Commonwealth Trust while Meghan maintains her position as its vice president. The Queen's Commonwealth Trust uses its network, platform and resources, built and shaped together with young people from across the Commonwealth, to support young leaders in realizing their dreams and hopes for the future. Harry and Meghan opened the conversation by asking the group about Queen's Commonwealth Trust and its role in supporting them. 
Asked by Meghan with Queen's Commonwealth, Trust is different, Queen's Commonwealth, Trust advisor Kenny Imafedin said. I feel like it is different because we're seeing young leaders as equal partners of a movement, a lot of us when we go out there to get grants. There's no real engagements, and the Queen's Commonwealth Trust is very different in that. The group went on to discuss the significance of Queen's Commonwealth Trust's global network. Esther Marshall of Stan Tall and Sophie says observed how the powerful network of Queen's Commonwealth Trust has helped her combat loneliness as a founder and feel connected to a movement of dragon change. The Duchess nodded in agreement when Izzy Obeng explained how founding something for the first time is really tough. She added, the opportunity to share those struggles and learn how people do it globally, not just in your local context, is really powerful. The theme of inclusive support networks emerged across the conversation as vital to supporting equal opportunities and providing effective mental health awareness and support services. Victor Hugo stated, I had very amazing friends and a support system that made it possible to see through a difficult part in my life. That was the inspiration behind setting up my organization, Mentally Aware Nigeria, because I was looking to create that community I had for myself and replicate it for others. Reflecting on her motivation to start Girl Dreamer, Emna Acker said, I needed people around me to say to me you can do this, and this belief really made me feel like I could smash those barriers. During the discussion, Harry and Meghan remarked on the personal lived experience of the leaders in the room and their motivation to act, linking this to the impact this has on developing solutions. Harry said that makes all the difference while Meghan added, it's saying, let's not wait until there's a problem and try and fix it, let's try and stop the problem from happening to begin with. The Duke commented that the next generation are leading the way in driving change. There is no way that the older generation are going to be able to change their mindset unless it's their children who are influencing the change, he said. You have a whole group of young people coming through who just have a completely different mindset and focus on how to make things different, it's an amazing opportunity. So where do you start you start? With guys like you who are within the community, and that relatability, and that shared experience, you can't buy that. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex attended their last official engagement after stepping down as senior royals at the Commonwealth Service at Westminster Abbey. The couple joined the Queen and other senior royals in their last official duty before holding a series of meetings in Britain and heading back to Canada next week. The pair will be reunited with their 10-month-old son Archie in North America before officially stepping down in three weeks, time on March 31st. The couple have been staying at their UK base of Frogmore Cottage in Windsor over the past few weeks, while carrying out several engagements, but will fly back to Vancouver Island, where they have been living in recent and a luxurious $18 million waterside mansion. They will keep their Windsor home, and start paying commercial rent, and paying back $3.1 million in taxpayers, money spent on its renovations. Megan Dodd and Emerald Green Ensemble an exquisite cape dress by designer Amelia Wickstead, with a matching hat by William Chambers, as she arrived for the Commonwealth Day service. The elegant, long-sleeved dress is thought to be a bespoke creation by Wickstead, a favorite of both Meghan and the Duchess of Cambridge. The Sussexes appeared to exchange an awkward hello with Prince William and Kate Middleton at the service. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex walked in ahead of William and Kate, the first public meeting of the two brothers and their wives since Mexico was announced two months ago. Unlike last year, Harry and Meghan were conducted to their seats at the church in London, rather than waiting for the Queen's arrival and walking through with the monarch and key royals as they did in March 2019. Once seated, the royals' position on the chairs was based on their ranks within the family, with Charles next to the Queen due to him being first in line followed by William in second, and Harry in sixth. They took similar positions last year, although Meghan was next to Prince Andrew, who has since stepped down from royal duties. Please support Growing LNT World channel, by subscribe channel, like and share videos hour.
Your support is the motivation for us to produce better videos. Don't stop.